How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here with part two of my Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer analysis. In this video, I'll be making some corrections as well as adding information that I missed in part one. It goes without saying, watch part one first in order to have full context for this video. There is a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. The first scene I would like to revisit from the trailer is this one right here, where I missed one small but vital piece of information. I'm of course talking about the horse testicles. Its absence was really the one thing that I hated about Red Dead Redemption 1. It just felt like one or two things were missing from the game, you know? Thankfully, Rockstar stepped up to the plate and added the only feature that really matters. The one that we need, but not the one we deserve. God bless you, Rockstar. God fucking bless you. All joking aside, this should give you a pretty good idea for just how much detail we can expect to find in every facet of this game, including the wildlife. Moving along, I would like to take a look at this shot here where we see two men on a canoe making their way through this body of water. I call this kayaking in my previous video, but the proper term is canoeing, so thank you to those who pointed that out. But yeah, it looks like Redemption 2 will feature canoeing as one of its modes of transportation, and it looks like Rockstar is planning to expand the player's ability to interact with large bodies of water for this game. I'm thinking they might even add the ability for players to swim, which we couldn't do in Redemption 1. But even more compelling about this shot is the Dreamcatcher hanging from the tree, a trademark trinket of the Native Americans. There is also a popular assumption that the man rowing the canoe is in fact a Native American himself, judging by his attire and hair. Native Americans were referenced in Red Dead Redemption 1, but they were only a minor part of the game. This time it looks like they'll be quite prominent, which might indicate that the game takes place somewhere between the late 1800s or early 1900s, the end tale of the Indian Wars. More specifically, my assumption is that we're looking at somewhere between 1895 and 1905. I'm basing this not only off of Native American history, but also on the timeline logistics. We can't go too far back because we know that John Marston was born in 1873, so going back any further than 1895 would mean he'd have to be younger than 22 years old, which I think might be pushing it. And we can't go much further than 1905 because it was in 1906, a year later, that John Marston was left for dead after a botched robbery by Dutch's gang, marking his retirement from the group. So somewhere between 1895 and 1905 is, I think, a good range for where Redemption 2 will fall in the timeline at the start of the game. As for what was happening within that time frame as far as Native American history is concerned, you've got, as I said before, the tail end of the Indian Wars that lasted from 1811 all the way to 1924. Now, within the time frame that I've specified, 1895 to 1905, known conflicts with Native Americans include the Indian Appropriations Act of 1871, which ended the United States' recognition of additional Native American tribes or independent nations, and battles such as the Bannock Uprising, the Yaqui Uprising, and the Battle of Sugar Point. It was also around this time that the United States established boarding schools for Native Americans, where students were forbidden to speak their native language, forced to abandon their religion to practice Christianity, and essentially coerced to relinquish their Native American heritage and embrace the European American culture. It was quite horrible and traumatizing for the children there, who were also often physically and mentally abused. But the point is that the conflicts between America and the natives was a big part of the late 1800s and the early 1900s, and with Redemption 2 seemingly taking us back in time to this period, I would definitely expect Native Americans to play a much bigger role than they did in Redemption 1. This is even alluded by characters in Redemption 1 through dialogue. For example, here's a quote from very early in the game. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. He talks about how they fought Indians from the east, which not only coincides with Native American history between the late 1800s and early 1900s, but also with the fact that Redemption 2's alleged leaked map seems to suggest that we will be traversing to new areas towards the east of Redemption 1's setting. So all the signs are there. With that out of the way, I'd like to move on to this next shot, where we see a herd of buffaloes, more specifically American bison, running alongside a train. 
Something that I failed to mention before is the sheer number of bison gathered in this one shot alone, a stark contrast from Redemption 1, which had a grand total of 20 bison and if you kill them, they would not respawn. This was done as a representation of the near extinction of American bison in our real world history. Before the 1800s, there were nearly 60 million of them scattered all throughout the United States, but by the end of the 1800s, only a little over 500 remained and by the turn of the century, a mere 300. And with Redemption 1 taking place in 1911, which is after the turn of the century, the extremely limited number of bison made sense on a historical perspective. With that in mind, looking at this shot, I think it's quite apparent that Redemption 2 has to take place before Redemption 1. After all, there are more bison here than there are in the entirety of the first game. So perhaps this serves as another big hint regarding Redemption 2's time period. Now, in our real world history, even in the 1890s, the buffalo population had been dwindled down into a mere 500. So if Redemption 2 takes place between 1895 and 1905, as I've theorized, there still shouldn't be this many. I have one of two theories. Either we're looking at the only herd of American bison that exists in the entire game that is slightly bigger than Redemption 1's herd because there were slightly more of them back then, or we're seeing Rockstar taking liberties with the game's pseudo-history. We know Rockstar has already done this with games like Grand Theft Auto, which are based on real-world settings like New York City and Los Angeles, known as Liberty City and Los Santos in the Grand Theft Auto world, as well as real-world current events but they add their own crazy spin to all of it. So another theory is that we might see a lot more buffalo in Redemption 2 because Rockstar decided that it's alright if their population doesn't exactly match up with our real world history. As long as there's a certain level of consistency to it, I think that should be fine. Moving along, the next shot I would like to revisit is this one here, where we see our first look at one of Redemption 2's towns. I analyzed the hell out of this one in part one of my analysis, but one word that I didn't understand at the time was notions. Since then, I've learned that the word refers to sewing supplies. And the reason this is important is that it might further hint at some kind of crafting system to create your own clothes and outfits. Whether it's this general store that takes care of the crafting for you, with you just picking out the designs and paying the money, or if you get to buy the materials from them and do your own sewing, that's hard to say at this point. But the ability to outfit the player character is something that I would love to see in Redemption 2. And hopefully the sign listing things like notions, cloth and linen were put there on purpose to hint at plans to implement such a feature. Next up, let's go back to this shot showing us more of Redemption 2's towns. Now, one important correction I would like to make is that these are not savage chickens, as I called them in my previous video. These are vultures. No idea why I decided to use the word savage chickens, but that's that these are vultures eating away at the flesh of a dead wolf. In my defense, vultures might as well be savage chickens. Anyway, something else I would like to draw your attention to is the man in front of this large carriage here. One popular assumption is that this is none other than Uncle from Red Dead Redemption 1. Not only does he look like he could be a younger version of Uncle, the man also looks like he could be a rancher, which is relevant because something we learned about Uncle in Redemption 1 is that he was once a rancher who owned his own spread before becoming a petty thief. Further evidence of this man's profession can be found in this previous shot, where we see a man in a ranch-like setting wearing a very similar outfit. Notice how both have similar looking brown cowboy hats, both wear a red scarf around their necks, both wear a white shirt with long sleeves, both wear overalls, both wear similar looking brown boots, and both wield some type of rifle or repeater, none of which by the way is too dissimilar from Uncle's attire in Redemption 1. So you've got a guy who looks like a younger uncle, who dresses not too dissimilarly from uncle, and who seems to be a rancher like uncle once used to be. I can totally see how it's at least possible that this really might be a younger uncle, but nothing is confirmed and it's equally likely that this is just some random NPC who happens to look like uncle, but it doesn't hurt to keep the possibility at the back of your head. Moving on, we've got this shot of the burning settlement that I talked about in part one, but many were keen to point out that this is not a town, but rather an oil field, with these tower-like structures being oil wells. Keep in mind that during this time period of our real world, demand for kerosene, oil lamps, and other oil-powered contraptions were at an all-time high, and as a result, the oil industry flourished. So this setting right here is probably a representation of the oil boom. 
Something else that was pointed out to me is that this scene is very reminiscent of the famous oil well fire scene from the movie There Will Be Blood, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. Redemption 2 already references classic westerns such as The Magnificent Seven, so who's to say that Rockstar didn't take some inspiration from another classic western? Also relevant about this movie is the fact that it also takes place between the late 1890s and the early 1900s, starting in 1898 and ending in 1927. And the story deals with a man's quest for wealth during the oil boom occurring in this time period. So once again, this could be further hinting that Redemption 2 does indeed take place somewhere between 1895 to 1905, plus or minus a few years of error margin after excluding the years that wouldn't be logistically possible within the lore of Red Dead. One last thing I would like to point out is that if you go to the alleged leaked map of Redemption 2 and take a closer look, it's possible to find a location called Heartland Oil Fields, and right next to that is a shop that sells kerosene and tar, further corroborating the aforementioned theories. Now from what I've seen, this is the only location labeled oil field in the entire map, suggesting that there is only one oil field in the entire game. So I'm thinking that this location in the trailer can't be anything else other than Heartland Oil Fields. The final scene I would like to analyze is the last shot of the trailer where we see a magnificent seven-like group on horseback treading through the vast fields of Redemption 2's game world. In part one of my analysis, I managed to match up three of the characters with the ones from the teaser image, while pointing out that the rest are indistinguishable because they are not only wearing hats and masks that cover up their faces, but are also wearing outfits that don't match anything seen in the image. But a number of interesting things were pointed out to me about the remaining characters. Let's start by zooming in to the second character from the left. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that this man might be African American. If we zoom in and play around with the image settings here, I can definitely see how that might be possible. Then again, it might also be lighting from this blurry image playing tricks on the eyes, but hey, if it turns out to be true, I wouldn't mind seeing a Django-style character join the gang. Now, unlike in Django Unchained, which took place a few years before slavery was abolished, Redemption 2 takes place after the abolishment of slavery, so sites like African American Cowboys would be a more common sight in this game. Another member of the group I'd like to draw your attention to is this man to the very right, or should I say this gal? It was pointed out to me that based on characteristics of her attire, particularly the puffy sleeves, and physical attributes like breasts, we could be looking at a cowgirl. As for who this could be, the most logical assumption is that we're looking at none other than Abigail Marston, who was known to have ridden with members of Dutch's gang, and in more ways than one. She was also a prostitute and slept with just about every member of the gang until she eventually fell in love with John Marston and became pregnant with his son, Jack Marston. So yeah, this could very well be her. Now, all of this makes the discrepancy between the Magnificent Seven characters seen in the trailer and the one seen in the teaser image that much more prominent. There doesn't seem to be any African American men in the image, assuming that the man in the trailer really is African American. And there most definitely isn't a woman anywhere here. So this raises the question of why are the seven members different between the two sources? The only thing that I can think of is that Dutch's gang will be comprised of more than just a handful of people, and players will be able to switch them in and out as they please to form a group of up to seven, depending on their needs for specific missions, with each member possibly specializing in certain areas. A good comparison to make are GTA V's heists. In that game, the focus was on the three main characters, but you could also recruit on the side and bring in new members to help out in large-scale missions like heists. I get the feeling that we might be seeing something similar in Redemption 2. Unless one of the characters suddenly grew boobs within the span of two days, it's the only explanation. And I'm thinking that should this turn out to be true, we might be looking at Rockstar implementing large-scale raid or heist missions to really make players feel like they're part of a gang. And I'm even thinking that there might come a time in which we'll get to play through the botched robbery from 1906 that resulted in John Marston getting injured and left for dead, which could tie together the events of Redemption 2 with Redemption 1. Definitely a cool prospect. And that about concludes all of the information that I missed or needed to correct from my original trailer analysis. So with that, I would like to conclude this video. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below if you noticed anything else that I didn't. And to be further updated on all things Red Dead Redemption 2, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.